Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and it's Ken, aka That One Appear today with yet another new and exciting audio review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Campfire Audio Andromeda and the Campfire Audio Vega, the respective flagships of the Campfire Audio lineup. Now, I first had the chance to try a Campfire Audio product back at the first CanGem Singapore, and that was when a fellow audio enthusiast insisted that I try his new IEM purchase, the Campfire Audio Jupiter. I gave it a go, and I was indeed rather impressed by it. It was a little thick for my taste and didn't have quite the same high frequency extension as say the Andromeda now, but I was interested. I wrote to Campfire Audio and a little over a year later, I now have the chance to be covering both of their flagship models. And for that, I am thankful. Uh, it's been a great opportunity and I do want to thank the good folks at Campfire Audio for coordinating and sending me uh, these earphones to, so that I can conduct a full video review and a written review, which will be linked in the description below. Now, for those of you who are in the dark about Campfire Audio, it is an IEM manufacturer based out of Portland, Oregon. And previously, you might have known them under the guise of ALO Audio, and that's because Ken Ball and team set out on a project to produce high-quality IEMs under the Campfire Audio name. And the great thing about Campfire Audio is that all their IEMs are universal, and they do represent a very unique design and perhaps a sound philosophy. Um, in this day and age where driver count seems to be all the craze, um, I have to say that this is a very refreshing look at IEM design. They used some very interesting materials and the craftsmanship in each of these earphones is certainly impressive. Now, the Campfire Audio lineup is split down the middle, so to speak, um, into two rather different lineups. Uh, on, the, on the figurative left here, okay, we have the balanced armature uh, lineup leading to the Campfire Audio Andromeda, which is a five balanced armature earphone. So you got five BAs in each. If I'm not wrong, the split is two low, one mid, two high. And for the Vega, you have this entire lineup of rather interesting dynamic driver earphones. And if I'm not wrong, um, you do have a hybrid as well. It's the Dorado. Um, the Vega itself is an 8.5 millimeter um, dynamic driver earphone, and it is rather unique in the sense that um, we haven't seen all that many single dynamic driver earphones for a long time since, say, the EX1000. Nowadays, we do have the AKT8IE and the Biodynamic Zalento and the Vega, and these are certainly compelling entries in the revival of the single dynamic driver earphone. Now, Having covered that, I do want to move on to just a brief explanation about what I was doing for the last 31 days and why I've been pretty inactive on my website and on my YouTube account. I was up in Alaska and I was doing all sorts of crazy things including uh, backcountry stuff, fishing, and that's more or less why I haven't been in tune with the audio world for quite a bit. Excuse the truck going past in the background. Um, but I'm back now, and I do have a bunch of pretty interesting reviews lined up for this upcoming summer. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video review. It was tons of fun making it. And without further ado, let's get started with a brief overview of the packaging for the Campfire Audio products. Now we did a full unboxing slash um, unpacking of the earphones in a previous video review, which I'll link in the description below. However, I'll do, I'll, I will go over and recap um, the contents of that video in this video as well. Both of these IEMs come with a really nice leather carrying case with a nice liner in, inside. And it's just the right size case because it actually holds the IEMs pretty well, so much so that they don't rub against each other or scratch the metal finishes on, uh, on, on each earpiece which is a really nice cover. Over here we have little pouches, and I don't know why the Andromeda doesn't have it, but the Vega has little pouches that you can put each of the respective earphones in, and that is added protection against the scratching. It's a really nice touch, and I think um, more um, manufacturers should include it. Uh, one of the things that I would say probably may have saved a little bit of material is if these two pouches came together and just had a single wall in the middle separating it. It's probably going to be easier for 
people to use and also just save an extra little bit of material here, I suppose. But that's a small thing. Each of these earphones comes with a warranty, uh, a nice little booklet explaining uh, the unique features of each of these earphones, and a pretty wide offering of ear tips. You get three spin fits in naturally three different sizes, uh, three comply, three pairs of complies, and three silicon tips, a ear cleaning, a ear tip cleaning brush, and a little pin. Okay, so it's a pretty comprehensive package, and the box certainly looks nice. Now let's talk a bit about the sound of these earphones. The Campfire Audio Andromeda is a simply superbly balanced earphone that's made even better by choice ear tips. Now you can see I've got a little collection here and I'll talk a bit more about this later on. Um, the bass performance is responsive at type but not lacking and the sub bass is rendered as needed with detailed cues demonstrating the reproduction capabilities of the earphone. The mid bass is expectedly inoffensive and the mid range is linear and connects to the higher frequencies without um, a hitch. Um, upper frequencies are naturally well extended and liquid, but they don't come off as being tiresome. The ER4S to sum is the definition of tiresome. Uh, detail retrieval is excellent and sound stage and imaging are spot on. A touch of coolness tints the Andromeda's tonality. And that does appeal to me because as a longtime ER4 user, I do feel the Andromeda is simply a very well-tuned IEM, and it's honestly what Etymotics should have shot for when they came up with their new generation of earphones. Unfortunately, um, the new ER4 series doesn't seem to be all that much different from the old one, but the Andromeda is certainly an excellent reference level IEM. Shout out to Campfire Audio for these. The Campfire Audio Vega, on the other hand, um, this is the bad boy of the Campfire Audio lineup. It's got it's got a prominent bass response that digs deep and hits pretty darn hard. And in certain ways, you know, it is a rather tilted, if not colored, earphone. Having said that, um, I do enjoy this a lot. It, the Vega is a heck of a lot of fun to listen to. And one of the reasons why it's easily one of the best earphones with the sound signature is because the mid-range does come out mostly intact. Um, you don't get the sense that there's massive bass spill, and the highs are still very well extended on the Vega, so this is still an excellent earphone, especially if you want a little bit more bass in your audiophile life. Uh, one of its weaker points is instrument timbre, uh, but I'll discuss that in the comparisons coming up. Now I'll, I'm introducing a new section where I'll take a look at certain pieces of music and discuss how these earphones uh, match up. Now the first piece that I do want to talk about is The Planets by Gustav Holst, specifically Venus. The version I'm listening to is performed by the BPO, and it's available on um, almost all the major streaming services, so it's pretty common. Um, at the start of the piece, um, you'll notice that there's a French horn call, and this alone uh, it makes for great comparison material, because you'll instantly hear how different earphones, different transducers render the instrument timbre. You'll notice that the Andromeda and the ER4 do excellently in this regard. It's smooth, but it also has a brassy edge to it. The Vega kind of makes the French horn sound like a euphonium. It's almost too rounded. So I'm not exactly a huge fan of how the Vega uh, renders um, that instrument. Uh, it becomes more obvious as the uh, second call goes out and is responded to by a selection of flutes and oboes you get a very nice, reedy, clear, and also somewhat incisive sound on the Andromeda, whereas the Vega comes across as just being less, less, less clear, less incisive, and generally, once again, smoother. So, I'm not a huge fan of that rendering of sound. Um, at around the 30 second mark, you do get a um, the beginning of a bass line, and that's where the Vega starts to excel. You can hear the the individual strings vibrate, and it's simply a very impressive, impressive rumble. Um, the Vega 
as mentioned before, has a very strong bass response and an excellent bass section at that. And this certainly plays into its strengths. And you'll see at the three minute mark again when the grand theme plays, that the Vega is able to capture so much emotion. It's just very emotional and very fun to listen to. Um, the Andromeda does excellently too, but it's not quite on that same level, probably due to its rather polite bass response in comparison. Um, Overall, I do have to say that while the Vega produces it's an excellent, very smooth, slightly rounded sound, um, I am still a bit of a, more of a fan of the Andromeda's technicalities. I feel that the Andromeda does perform stronger in those areas. As far as vocals go, um, it should be no surprise that the tonal balance of the Andromeda favors the mid-range performance over that of the Vega. Um, I was listening to Diana Krall's uh, East of the Sun and West of the Moon, and there's a certain spaciousness that per pervades her voice, especially when you listen to it on the Andromeda. Um, it's almost an appropriate rendering of vocal texture and linearity that produces this easiness of sound, and it's certainly very, very good to listen to. The Vega, on the other hand, is once again smoother, but it's also slightly less defined and present. It's well executed, without doubt, especially when you consider the earphone's impressive bass. Now, some final thoughts on both of these earphones. The Vega is absolutely stunning electronic music. Um, I spent time with uh, my massive playlist of chill wave, house, and other electronic concoctions, and I'm simply taken aback by what the Vega can achieve. Um, modern pop music, too, Leave it to the Vega. It, it will produce an amazing sound if you want to listen to modern pop. However, for a more ver versatile earphone in my mind, and generally speaking just a more well-rounded reference, um, I would have to say the Andromeda is the go-to earphone. Now, if you have the means, having both of these earphones together could potentially be an incredibly a awesome sonic toolkit because I think for those who enjoy Catfire Audio's tunings, these two earphones could potentially make up your entire collection of IEMs. That's how versatile they are, and I'm not even, and I'm not even exaggerating. I do feel that these two earphones have the potential to do that. Overall, you can't really go wrong with either of these earphones. The Andromeda and the Vega both sound excellent. And you know what, if you have the chance, give both of these a try. Um, because these are simply excellent IEMs. And I think a good number of people should probably consider it if they're going for a top of the line IEM purchase. Once again guys, thanks for watching and this is That One Noob signing off.